everyone, welcome to or back to my channel. Today I'm going to be trying something new and taking you along with me on the journey of trying it out. I'm going to be trying to make an eco brick. So I've collected some plastics that aren't recyclable and I'm going to go through the process and try to make an eco brick. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to learn as well, keep on watching and let me go grab my supplies. So I'm pulling all my info from ecobricks.org. I'll pop up like a screenshot of their website. This is where I sort of learned everything. They have a 10 step process. So that's what I'm gonna be using to make my eco bricks. The first step is save, separate, clean, and dry plastics. So I have my box here of the plastics that I've been saving up. This is the jug that I'm gonna use today. I've already washed and dried this. But now I need to wash and dry these. Mostly they're like protein bar packets and like fruit bar packets. So I've collected them and now I'm going to go wash and dry them and then separate them into like the colors because they do mention some things about colors and separation. So I'm going to go take care of that and I'll be back in a second. That was the process, but... Here's most of it dry, washed and dried, and I say most of it because some of it is still wet. I had to like hand dry them because they weren't air drying. So, I'm going to separate them by color. There we go. Separated. And then I have some clear plastics. So, first step. Dan, so it is really important to wash and dry the plastic that's gonna go into the bottles because dirty plastic will lead to microbiological growth and methane releasing. So not only will there be like gross bacteria growth inside of the bottle, but also if there's methane released, the bottle will expand and it could pop or if you build something with it and then it expands, it could mess up the whole like levelness of whatever you're creating with the bricks. That's step one, super important. Now on to step two. Step two is to choose your bottle, which I've already done. Basically, it's important to choose a bottle that you can get multiples of because if you make all of your bricks different sizes and shapes, it's gonna be harder to make something with them especially like something that's supposed to be level if they're all different sizes and shapes it's gonna come out awkward and also if you're making your bricks as a part of like a community event where you're listing them on the eco bricks app for sale or for donation whatever you're more likely to connect with someone if you have multiples of the same size so volume is important to uh bottles under 600 milliliters are good uh, especially when you're starting out a smaller bottle is easier to fill up and, and easier to see what mistakes you made once it's filled up. I have this bottle. I don't really have anything smaller than this, so this is what I have. But it's good to start out with smaller bottles. That's what the website says anyways, and I understand why. Also, another thing to take into account is if you already have a project in mind that you're going to be making with these bottles and bricks that you're making, that you get bottles that fit your project. So if you're making something small, get smaller bottles. If you're make, trying to make like a whole house, you would obviously get bigger bottles to take up more space and be more sturdy and secure. So that's the second step. Choose your bottle. This is mine. And I have to take the label off. Label off. And I can add this to my pile because it's clean because I washed this. If you have a project in mind or if you're trying to make something, pick it beforehand so you can make the correct bricks for your project. But if you're like me and you don't have a project in mind, you're just making this to have them and possibly donate to somebody else, that's not as important, but it is important to sort of assess the situation before you get started. Step number three is packing stick. Packing sticks are important and useful to pack down the plastic. So once you get it in there, it's super lightweight, it's going to float around, but if you have a packing stick to stuff in there and make sure everything's compact, that's super important to getting a good and even sturdy eco brick. The packing stick should be one third the diameter of the opening of the bottle you're using. 
and twice the height of your bottle. Also, it's important that it doesn't have a pointy tip because if it does, it can puncture the bottle and destroy your eco brick. Now, I don't have a packing stick and I'm on a no buy for June, so I'm not gonna go out and buy like a wooden dowel. So I'm gonna go an adventure around my house and try to find something that would work. Okay, I'm back. So I found, I have this bamboo straw not quite the right height, right? So it's shorter than my bottle. But I also have this bamboo chopstick. Well, I have two of them, but I have this one. And I'm gonna put it in here and like kind of push it down. So it's pretty sturdy. You can see I put it like in there and it's like kind of stuck in there now. And now it's not twice the height of my bottle, but I mean, it's long enough to reach in there and get to the bottom and like stomp things down. So actually better than I thought I was gonna find. So ingenuity is important when you're on a no buy. Step number four is no glass, metal, or biodegradables. The reason why we're putting this plastic in the bottles is to secure it. Otherwise, it'll get out into the environment and degrade into microplastics and toxins. So that's why we're securing the plastic. Other things like metal can be recycled. Glass can also be recycled and biodegradables can just be put in the compost bin. So we're not gonna put like a granola bar in here when it can go in the compost bin. Another reason why we don't pack glass or metal into the bottles is because they can have sharp edges and they can be pointy sticky things that pose a danger for the people that are handling them. Step number five, now it's time to get started with the eco brick. So step number five is to pick a bottom color. So a lot of times with these products with eco bricks, you can see the bottom part of the bottle exposed outside of the project. So that's what step number five is, is to pick a color that's gonna go on the bottom. I don't really have a lot that's like very similar, but the most that I have is like these purple fruit bar wrapper things. So I'm gonna try to get this part facing down as best as I can. If not, it's just gonna be silver, so not a big deal, but might be a mix. So now it's time to take these plastics and cut them into smaller pieces so they pack more tightly. The smaller you go, the tighter they pack. The bigger the pieces, the more air and space is left for air and instability in the brick. So that's why we have to pack it down into the little dimples and all the little parts of the bottom of the bottle. This is what I have of the purple. Start packing it in the bottle. I feel like this is barely even covering the bottom, but we might get a good first layer out of this color. And I mean, it seems pretty ridiculous to try to do this. Kind of what it looks like so far. I'm gonna cut up some more stuff, put it in, and be back in a second. plastic that I have right now. I guess I'll make this sort of a maybe like month long video since this is all I have. I thought it would fill up a lot more. Um, it's so like loose in there. I don't have enough that it's like you don't even need to pack it down yet. So this is about a month's worth of plastic and it's barely in here. Once it's compact, it's probably going to be like right here, probably. So I will keep adding to this box and come back to you when I have more plastic. Okay, so I got my first batch of plastic in. It's starting to fill up. I still have quite a bit left though. So I'm going to get to cutting and filling this up. Okay, so now I've pretty much filled this all the way up with the plastic, but there's a lot of like open air pockets. So all of those need to be like pushed down and filled up. So I'm gonna take this stick from before and I think it might actually be useful now. The 
this is definitely helping i don't know if you can tell on camera the difference but in the bottom like this little section right here is definitely way more compact than it was it's still pretty loose up here because there's still all this space this area you can see is definitely way more compact so a few things i'm thinking about right now i probably should have picked a smaller bottle but this is the only one i had and i didn't want to go out and buy a plastic bottle just to have one that would be a better use if that makes sense but i mean it's looking better more like a real eco brick now this is definitely a longer process than i thought it would be so that's it for right now the next clip will be me with some more plastic probably next week so it's been a few more days and my box is pretty much full again so i'm gonna fill up what i can of this eco brick i did like a refrigerator clean out and made some like recipes for the week so i have quite a bit of trash did some like refilling of like some items like nutritional yeast so let's cut these up and then get them in this bottle so i cut up all the pieces this is my pile here let's get to packing this eco brick This is so much plastic. This is like almost a month's worth of plastic for me. This part from like here to here is like completely compacted, but the rest of this is still pretty loose. And up here, it's still empty. So I don't even know how much plastic it's gonna take to completely fill this thing. I mean, that's good. That means I'm not using a lot of plastic. And it also means that like making an eco brick really compacts plastic that could like be polluting our oceans and like being in the landfill it's now like the fifth week and i have a full box again so let's see if we can fill this up it's still pretty loose like from here to up to the top so we'll see if it'll compact down and still be full by the time i'm done this time and I've already washed and dried all of this plastic. It's an important step that I didn't mention last time. So just wanted to mention that everything's clean. And now I'm going to cut it up and put it in there. This is what the pile's looking like. I think it's the biggest pile I've had yet. I'm gonna see how full I can get this. I might even have leftovers at this point. I can't believe this, but it's still not full. This is super compact now though, and this part up here is pretty compacted, but like from here to here, it's still kind of loose, and then this is still empty. I can't believe all of that plastic fit in here and it's still not full. Well, see you guys in another week. It's been six weeks now. I think this is the sixth week, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this is my plastic pile up for the week. These I grabbed from work. I work at a hotel, so we give out plastic water bottles to guests, unfortunately. Um, and I refilled it yesterday, so I grabbed these instead of tossing them. This is like the plastic that the water bottles come in. But let me get started cutting. Um, fast forward a little bit and then I'll show you what it looks like. So I stuffed all the plastic I showed you guys in here and then I even added in a grocery bag that I found out of the sink and a dry cleaning bag that I had from some work clothes in the closet. So I added that in and it's still not full. It's much more sturdy on the bottom. Like before it was just sturdy right here, but now about to right, like right here, it's pretty sturdy and like packed in. So I still have more to go, still have to fill like this much and I guess I'll see you guys in the next clip. 
I'm back. It's been another week. I think this marks a month and three weeks. I think almost two months. I don't know. But I have quite a bit of plastic. Um, we had to order some groceries online, so a lot of it came in plastic this week. Also helped out at a family member's baby shower, and I kept some of the plastic from some of those things just so it wouldn't get tossed out. So I'm gonna have this to add in here too. So some of this stuff has to get wiped down, so I'm gonna do that, come back, and then we'll get to cutting all of this up and seeing if we can finish this eco brick up. It has been another week. I don't know what week I'm on, but it's been another week. And I have some more plastic. Most of it this week is from work. Some more like water bottle plastic holders. Hopefully this will fill up the rest of this because today is July 2nd, so Plastic Free July has started. So if I don't finish this now, I probably won't for like a whole another month. It's finally full, so I'm gonna put the top on it. And now I have to weigh it, and I have this kitchen scale that I borrowed from my mom. 651 grams. So the density has to be higher than 0.33 grams per milliliter. So basically like a third of whatever milliliters it has to weigh that in grams. So that's step number seven. Now step number eight is to cap and log your brick. So I've already capped it. It says to make sure that your eco brick isn't overflowing. So I feel like I've put a little bit too much in here. So I'm gonna save this for the next one. It says to leave about one to two centimeters between the cap and the plastic. I think that's good. Because if it is overflowing, this cap can break since this plastic is weaker than this plastic. So that's why you want to make sure you don't overfill it. Now it says to record the eco brick. So I'm going to pull up the website and sign up. Um, I'll show like a screen grab here. So I clicked log brick and it says who's making the eco brick and it has like a drop down menu. Um, and I click me. The bottom color turns out I tried to go for purple, but some of the wrappers got flipped upside down. So it's like silver and purple. So I'm just gonna click no deliberate color set. The brand of the bottle, this was a Welch's juice bottle. So I'm going to type Welch's. Where's the plastic from? Um, it's from home and community. I'm just gonna say home. Okay, how much does your eco brick weigh? Let me double check that again. I have 652 grams. And then the bottle volume, this is the bottle, 64 ounces, regular eco brick. Oh wait, my bottle's volume is measured in ounces. Okay, we can do it this way. That's a lot easier. There we go, perfect. And allocate this eco brick to a community project. Um, no, I don't have one. So that's the serial number. Use nail polish or enamel paint. I have paint pen um, to permanently record the serial number and weight onto the eco brick and take a photo in which both can be clearly read. Okay, let me make sure I get this right. So it's 188662. There's the serial number, a little crooked. <laughs> and now the weight, 652 grams. 
And then I'm also going to put the date. There's the date. Woo! So I'm gonna take a photo. It shows this photo like on the scale. So I'm going to turn on the scale. Enamel paint nail polish. Because those are oil-based paint pens that I use. Alright, it says success. Your eco brick is logged. Yeah. Look at that. Description and everything. That's so cool. Total plastic. Oh, so this tracks like your community area too. Okay, so it shows that it says waiting for review, so I guess it has to be like authenticated. But that's really cool. I have one listed now. All right, so that is the whole eco brick journey. This took me, I don't even know how long to collect all this plastic, even collecting from work and like family members. So eco bricks are a great way to keep plastic from going into the ocean. And they're super useful for like building things, creating projects, all kinds of stuff. So it's like a really cool thing to learn about and I definitely suggest trying it out if you haven't already. Super rewarding, I mean, just seeing how long it took me to fill this up was pretty grounding because of course you're always thinking that like you're creating so much plastic waste and like being so wasteful but in reality it took me so long to fill this whole thing up so it made me feel a little bit better about my plastic consumption of course i want to cut down even more this is a great option to keep what plastic waste you do create from going into the landfill and into the oceans so i definitely recommend trying this out let me know in the comments down below if you've made an eco brick before and if you've used that website and sort of what your experience was like. I'm always interested to hear about it. This was my first one. And also let me know if you're gonna try it out and sort of what your questions might be for it. I definitely had a few hiccups. But yeah, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I come out with new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and sometimes Saturdays. So I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.